So if everybody can see my screen, um, essentially I'm going to uh, go through this, so please bear with me. Uh, Kirsten uh, is not here today and Jeff is not here today. And uh, so we'll, we'll go uh, through the items, at least give an update from the items from last week and uh, try to determine new items uh, going forward um, and whether or not that applies. Uh, how does he usually do this? Uh, well, I guess we'll start with, uh, we'll start with the agenda. Um, so priority top 20 item list, initial prioritization of requirements, GitHub priorities by chain and communication. Um, so there's supposed to be an update today. Uh, how do I open this card? There you go. We've got the open card. Uh, so the the oh yeah. So that's the that's the item prioritization. Uh, I guess I can give a an update on my end uh, from that because I think I had something on there. So last week we talked about uh, reaching out um, to the original uh, authors of the blue papers and letting them know which items from their, the proposals within the respective blue papers were selected as part of the top 20 um, from this coalition in terms of priorities and finding out whether or not they would like to bid on those items. Uh, the idea being that uh, from our process internal to EOS, uh, we had given uh, the expectation of first right of refusal once the time came prior to this group existing. And depending on what their reply was um, on that, that offer being made uh, uh, now that we've prioritized to bring back to this group to find out whether or not this group agreed with what was being proposed. So I did send that out uh, last week right after uh, our call. It, it seems as though um, in the Audit Plus group, uh, Slowness is not going to be bidding on any items. However, Sentinel is supposed to come back um, and they said that they're interested on bidding the items that were found in the Audit Plus blue paper that were prioritized in this group. I'm still waiting on that. Uh, in the API Plus group, uh, essentially uh, the teams are uh, EOS Nation, EOS Rio, and Graymas. Uh, they have said that they're they're looking at and they're interested in on bidding in, the, I believe, the three items that are found in that blue paper. So still waiting on that. And in the Wallet Plus team, uh, which is essentially just gray mass, uh, I believe we also have three items. And uh, Aaron has said, or gray mass has said, that they're, they are also interested on bidding on those items. Uh, having said this, nobody so far has submitted any pitches. Nobody's uh, provided any information. Um, so that is the the update on that front. Um, any questions about that? Um, for these, I, I, I guess it just um, may, that might that might help us to maybe um, close down a few uh, ticket items. I guess, but um, if uh, if if we feel that the um, uh, description that's in the, the blue papers and also the that that initial process um, is well underway. I would suggest we kind of remove these items from the the list of twenty, uh, at least at least when it comes to um, writing their overview, general overview. Um, and this is kind of the, I guess, like the document we've been using so far, like uh, making these general overview for all these proposals. So if we feel like they they are already covered, we can keep them in the list of priorities, but just remove the uh, item of writing their over uh, overviews that will that will uh, uh, shrink that list quite a bit. I think there's only. Well, and it also outsources the workload of actually getting those written by the people who wrote it in the first. But place. I mean, they're they're kind of already written from 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 what I gather because they are in the blue papers. We could we mm -hmm. could just quite literally take the blue papers and copy them in there to have their their general overview because that's that's more or less what they uh, they're doing. There might be a little bit of formatting, but mm -hmm. um, it's it's largely uh, kind of overlapping work. I feel. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, does anybody uh, object uh, that, which actually would remove work from the, that's not from the scalability group, right? That's that's no. just the, I guess, initiative that Jeff is leading. Correct. Yes. It's the, um, I, I can share, I can share that um, basically like. Uh, it's the it's 20 or so folder. documents. Oh, I guess it is the 20 documents. Correct. Um, Google folder. Okay. This one here. So uh, yeah, we have like a, essentially there's 22 in there. 
Uh, and these are essentially to be defined. Uh, you can look at the first one, for example, for the model. Um, we have a few, I think there's six or seven that have been uh, defined and probably like one or two more uh, will be defined like rather quickly. Um, but if we if we decide that all of the other ones that have not been defined yet, we're happy with the definitions that we have in the blue papers, we can just like kind of um, maybe put a link to the to the to the blue paper in there, um, or or copy what's in the blue paper in these it kind of achieves the same effect. But yeah, I I agree with that, and I in my opinion, the only thing we needed to write were the ones for the ad hoc because we didn't have right. any. Yeah, doc. And I think Jeff right. mistakenly decided to rewrite them for all the top 20. We only needed them written for the 15 ad hoc. Right, because this is this is this is the this is basically just kind of the input to the next step, which is creating the RFP for all of them. So yes. uh, that in, that input can be the blue paper kind of just agree. Just the same point. Com completely agree. I, I mentioned that to Jeff as well. Um, and I mean, if we need more than what we have in the blue paper, we can figure out how we can get more of that by contacting the right. authors or, you know, bringing it up on a, one of the calls or something. Were there sense. any items in particular um, that were reviewed and deemed to be uh, lacking in substance um, as, as, it, as they stand? Was there anything that actually stood out there or at least, at least do this one or essentially only the ad hocs? Are you asking me or are you asking Guillaume? Uh, well, I guess, Ted, you've gone through a little bit of the process, but Guillaume as well, you've gone through the process. Is there anything in particular where you're reading this and like, ah, I'm still not sure what this means. Let's beef up this particular one. Not in the blue papers for me, not for me in the blue papers, but obviously the ad hoc has nothing. There, there's no, nothing written. Of course. Uh, of course. In, in, the, in the blue papers, to me, the exception would be the core plus uh, paper. I, yeah. I, I don't know who wrote but it. But only three uh, of them made it into the top 20, only three core plus. Right. But there are specific functions. So yes, we could, you're, you're right. Those three were quite limited in actual verbiage and, and substance. Yeah. But it's also because they're quite direct and obvious. Like it's, I think the three are, are fixing a bug or they're fixing a particular um, uh, piece of the code right. or improving, right. yeah. But yes, okay, so let's uh, maybe yeah, highlight it's, those. Yeah, it's just because uh, Core Plus was written in a, a little bit of a different way than the others, uh, yes. I feel. Agreed. And, um, and uh, it's not, it's not to uh, say that uh, the information is not good, it's just it was organized a bit differently that doesn't mm -hmm. translate exactly the same way. So I feel like maybe these would benefit from being uh, defined a bit more uh, like we like we did for the the, the adducts. Gotcha. Yeah. So what I'll say is, or what I've written is that uh, we would focus on the ad hocs as well as maybe highlighting a little bit further the three core the plus. Core. Is so it the, three or, or two that were? Uh, it was, it's three. I'll tell you what they are. They're unsellable RAM staking, okay. comma rex, comma voting was all one, and contract pays. Those are the three. Uh, staking, staking voting. Sorry, I couldn't hear the second part. Staking, comma voting. Staking, yeah, it's staking, comma rex, comma voting. It was like a three-part uh, thing all mushed into uh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, rex yeah. and voting. Okay, and, and the third one, uh, uh, contract pays. Uh, which yeah, which um, yeah, that's a completely different thing. Actually, contract pays essentially is removed, but uh, we need to actually we'll need to look into further uh, from that. So my understanding was. Uh, when uh, Dan and his team took on the contract to uh, release Mandel 3, well, what at the time was Mandel 3.0 and uh, 2.3. So prior to us making the determination that we would simply fast forward and just go to 3.1 directly, um, contract pays was a function in there. And the function as they intended to write it um, apparently had a vulnerability into it. And so they couldn't deliver the function the way that they originally intended because of a vulnerability. However, um, uh, prior to uh, payment going to uh, Dan and, and the team, uh, the discussion was held about that particular function. And the idea was that that function, although not in the same format as what they originally intended, the functionality was still present, but in a different way. So you still got the same result, just going in a different route, not using contract pays 
um, as, as the function or as the named function. Having said, so I've been going on this assumption, really, um, and on this information over the last couple of months. And uh, the other day, uh, it was brought up in the developer channel, I believe, or somewhere. And uh, Todd uh, Fleming, who's not on the call right now, seemed to indicate that that function actually is still not enabled. Or So my understanding is either wrong or something else happened that came and removed basically the functionality, or I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't have the technical capability to uh, continue down this path or, or have this discussion further. Why I'm bringing it up is we should... Um, look into whether or not that still is the case, whether or not the function of contract pays still is enabled or still present in Mandel 3.1, um, or is it not? Um, regardless of what the name of the function is, but the, the actual function itself. Uh, so maybe, Ted, if you could get our engineers to look into that. Um, you, it's and, quite and maybe low Todd, Todd would have the information. It's Zach that did the back and forth with them. The reason why I bring it up now is that is the third item that we selected from Core Plus. Right. And I went to Core Plus and said, actually, that's already deployed. So we're not going to give you a contract for that. It's already, so we already have that function. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we need uh, to now uh, validate whether or not that's the case. Yeah. I mean, in that case, in that case, obviously, that removes the need. From, from having it there. So I guess we can just confirm that uh, whether or not this is in Mendel. Um, and uh, if it's not, uh, we, can, we can see how complicated it would be, but I, I, I reckon it would be quite simple to uh, incorporate it. So- uh, It seems like maybe the function was, um, uh, was dependent upon um, the original idea of having a hard fork earlier on, but the hard fork was with functions that we already have that we're going to be enabling anyways currently. Uh, date is September 23rd. So I'm, I, again, I'm lost. So I just need somebody can, can uh, I, internally who could figure that out. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, and I'm just going to assume I can. Uh, I think that we should ask for some kind of report. It can be pretty short uh, on whether or not that's important. Uh, that's included, and if not, why not? What 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 was tried and deemed yeah. the the exploit because or the vulnerability? Because we don't want to go down the road and then discover the exact same vulnerability. That would be a waste of time. So so if they can report to us, it is or it isn't, or here's how we did it, and also the reason why we removed it was because of this potential vulnerability. Then we don't have, you know, then we don't have to discover those, make, you know, make those errors right. ourselves. Yeah. Uh, uh, spot on, I'm, I think. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm either going to reach out to Todd Fleming myself, or I'm trying to see if Matt, Matt has already been kind of pinging Stephen and Todd a little bit. So I'm going to mm -hmm. see if it maybe be easier for him to do it. Other than contract pays, what should I call the sub function, Eve, that we're trying to find it's, the case in there? So uh, if, if contract pays is the idea. Uh, Zach, maybe you can forward along the discussion uh, between yourself and Todd from uh, the other day. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go take those up and I'll forward them into the chat. And that will give you all the context head to send to Matt. Okay, I'll hold off on this. I, I'll just un erase what I was typing into them. I'll, I'll wait till I get that. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Yeah, and there's no rush for that one. It's also quite low down the list. So um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's number seventeen. Our yeah. our list of twenty, by the way, grew to twenty two. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> it's now twenty two. And uh, well, contract pay, and and well, it's just number twenty one is uh, central service API, and number twenty two is wallet three request for permission. So it's just there, you know, it's just people. It's, they're, they were the next ones on the list. We we rank ordered them all the way to the bottom. It's uh, I don't know. Somebody just decided they like those two. Maybe maybe uh, Jeff couldn't count when he was making the list, but they're they're numbered now. It's, yeah, that's probably what happened we, because uh, they were not. So <laughs> you probably didn't notice. We had to tune them. And and the other two core are number ten and eleven. So I mean they're they're all the core ones are ten, eleven, and seventeen. They're down there a bit. Could we get a better, could I get at some point a better explanation or description of what we want in Rex uh, staking and an unsellable RAM? Uh, I think it's possible that we on Telus have already done some of that work and might be able to 
you know, a bid on that is, uh, you know, it saved us some money. Um, so, but I, I need to know what, what exactly the, well, well, not exactly, roughly what the spec is. All people voted on was what's in that section of the blue paper. I could either bring right. that up. We could bring it up and show you that section on the call, or, you know, you could just go reference so, that section. Yeah, I could do that myself, but it would, and so there wasn't anything more because nothing I, I would suggest now, that when, for all. those ad hoc ones, we have to, we have to come out with something a little more specific. I mean, I, I don't think I could go out with a, you know, uh, uh, an RFP for for that one as currently written. So I, think, I, I, think I, think I think I see where you're going here, Douglas. I would, if, if this is where you're going, I would agree we should probably write those three as a yeah. group, like we're writing all the ad hoc. That's, I think when I read those, they were, uh, I'm shocked anything of Core Plus made it into the top 20 because they're so, so just, fluffy. Just to, to stop, just to stop, we, we've, uh, that's already written. If you look on your screen, so those three items need to be defined further. So yes, okay. uh, already completely agree. And uh, yeah. Douglas, to your point, it is quite possible that TELUS has already solved some of these items because some of the items in Core Plus, um, for example, uh, BP pay um, current time limit where uh, the BP pay claiming needs to be right. done 24 hours because so, TELUS has already fixed that. So it is possible that some of these are already either completely fixed on TELUS and or partially fixed on TELUS. But either way, uh, your point well taken, those items, those three will be defined further and more specifically contract pays, the ENF will read a report um, to give a little bit more substance toward uh, on, on the discussion that I just had in terms of that function. I can shed a little light on these. Uh, unsellable RAM is not implemented anywhere. Um, uh, that I think was a driver from account creation side of things. The staking Rex voting is actually bug fixes and I believe they are already in Mandel. Um, it is a situation where users get locked into this. Um, yes. It's a lot of quality of life improvements. I think um, we fixed that, by the way. I don't believe so. I think I actually had, I just went through this on Telos a couple of weeks ago and I is still, there still had a to bug do some, where you yeah. can't get your recs out that were. Okay. Well, yeah. It is actually, some of these things are actually in progress or in sort of design because we were planning to do them ourselves. So um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I think we should take advantage of any chains that have already done some work, you know, some Agreed. you know, um, but so, but, but we need to know what that is, but let's, let's first see if the code is anywhere in our extended code base or if people are already work on it, working on it, because that, that even if it's not done, that will, that will, you know, speed things up and reduce costs. Just to confirm, Aaron, you mentioned the bug fix is already in that Dell. Yeah, I believe it is. so. We're, yeah. We're okay. So, so it's already done. We're, or is it process progress the process it's of fixed. Todd, Todd fixed, fixed. It in Mandel? Okay. But we're 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 rebasing all of our changes on top of Mandel currently mm. because we want that fix. So should I just delete this item then? It's already done. I think it's worth tracking, but I'm I'm quite confident. Yeah, we can we can keep it, but like uh, I think we should uh, we should have a yeah like a just just for a note like, to 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 confirm that yeah. Mendel fix it. Fixes it. Well, and, and I yeah. think actually, if, if you look at the comments of Todd's commit, uh, it's acknowledged as a workaround. So it's quite possible that the proper fix is not there, but a fix is there. So tracking a proper fix would be prudent. Yeah. And I, I think there were multiple things in that section of the blue paper. Um, one of them was that people had tokens stuck in Rex that they just could not get out. And that was a bug that needed to be fixed. And the other is the crappy user experience of having to stake before you can vote for block producers, before you can use RAM or before you can use Rex. Um, it's this silly series of events that needs to happen for a new account. I don't know if that one is fixed. So it's probably worth tracking. That I one think actually maybe is what Douglas is talking about because we removed the requirement of we voting for Rex. Cool. Yeah. We remove that, we, but we simply you don't have to vote. So that's a governance decision. Um, okay. There's a, there's a couple things until I in, until I have you know exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah, and, you know, I can talk about it. a lot. Some of these things are things that we've had on our on, you know kind of in our on our roadmap, and we've been talking about 
Um, and so let us, you know, once we see what that description is, we can, you know, Jesse can tell us what we, where we actually are on some of these things. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, it, I wasn't trying to go, Hey, we've got, you know, we've got this, but I just want to know what we, what we're really trying to accomplish. And I would say that for anything that like, let's not eject anything. Let's just, let's just keep anything that's in there now in there and let, and and document the current status and the and the future and the future development uh, needs. Uh, yes, where I was saying remove it is uh, I've reached out to the team to ask them to bid on this item. I will say don't bid on this item; it's already fixed. Gotcha, makes sense. That for that part of things, right? But yes, agreed that we can leave it in here as a as a record of. Um, other than so really, that, it, lo this. it looks that like, it looks like the. Um, uh, I mean, if we if we get a confirmation that contract pay is uh, well, either we can add it or there's no reason why to make it into Mendel. Um, and as Douglas pointed out, uh, if there is like just so that we know uh, and can reevaluate, then that would leave only unsellable RAM uh, to be uh, to be defined. And I think uh, it's uh, it's fairly obvious what it is. It shouldn't be very complicated to have like. A... I would say just to be completely thorough about what we're doing here. Um, we should include everything here and albeit uh, an easy lift, um, if it's something Telos or anybody else has already implemented, um, I think we still want a bid from someone to incorporate it into Mandel. At, I mean, at the very least, they lift and shift code from the Telos smart contract into Mandel and then build some tests around it um, because there's 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 a non-zero amount of work even if we've written all the code at Telos to do it, right? So we don't have to pay them to re-engineer and design the solutions if we have it, but we still need to have them incorporated into Mandel and, and probably, you know, a unit test would be included in that that maybe we don't have it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the other advantage of of keeping everything there is that in the future we have some kind of record of you know if if things come up again if we eliminate these things it'll just seem like we never considered them most likely if we keep them in and then we'll know what um you know what we've rejected in the past and why um i think it's just going to save us save us duplication of efforts in the future yeah, fair enough. I think in that case, we just uh, we just like um, let's say that go in that uh, that document, and instead uh, we just we just like write you know like these references instead of uh, objective KPY details, and uh, so it's still there. It explains like kind of why it's an exception, so to speak, and um, like how it gets resolved. Yeah, we we want to be clear. Like we we're not asking you to bid on a full design on these. We've solved this. But there's work to be done. Here's the scope. No, no, no. Uh, right, and I mean, like, it's uh, uh, we're still we're still kind of uh, one step before we start talking about bids and and, and whatnot. Because this is just that the purpose of that list is just to have, like, I guess, a an internal document to uh, to make a proper decision about what needs to be done. It's not the uh, it's the step before, according to uh, to Jeff's um, I guess like yeah. framework, Got is it. the step before the RFP where we essentially uh, define like what needs to be bid on and. Um, yeah, we define the scope. Exactly. Yeah. And, so, and just, just to confirm, this current discussion right now is the theoretical about other items, not any of yeah. the current items that are on screen. Correct. Uh, well, I guess I guess it's uh, this one. This one is uh, it, it is in the top twenty priority list. So it's um, uh, we just we just we just want to treat it in its own separate way. It's not we, we're not going to write that overview. Uh, for it, because I mean, we like like what right now. What I'm trying to do is to kind of uh, get through as many of these twenty, well, twenty two items, uh, and 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 have either that overview of what what needs to be done, uh, or a reference that points to a blue paper, or in that particular case, uh, references that point to possible uh, implementations that could just be merged into uh, into Mendel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we, if uh, we're, we're almost done with the list, like, uh, essentially once we go through that, uh, the last few exceptions in a sense, we'll have all of these 22 points addressed in the way that, uh, that, 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 that we need them to be addressed so that we can actually like take a final decision about prioritization and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, again, cause I'm the one taking the notes here. 
Jesse, your, your discussion and what you brought up, I agree with, but were you referring to a particular item or are you just talking about in the future? I'm just saying that any, any item that to Douglas's point has already been implemented on a specific chain. Uh, we don't just say, you know, we can't really just say it's solved because yeah. somebody saw but, so, but you're talking about the hypothetical when that I, you're not talking about one on the one of these right. on the screen, correct? Right. Yeah, okay, I'm just talking about gotcha. the approach okay. towards yes. that situation. Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree, I agree. I, I wasn't sure if because we said that, for example, the staking and regs voting is already in Mandel. What I wanted to confirm was you're not the one writing this in Mandel right now, taking the code that Telos has done. Then I would agree we should document for this actual item right now. Yeah. T You're saying the later rest. items. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Then yes, yeah, I, I fully agree with that as well. Yes. And there should be a cost to that. So anything that other chains have already implemented, if we want to implement it in Mandel, there's still work to do that. That should still, um, uh, you know, that should still be reflected. It shouldn't be free essentially to the, the, the coalition in, in a certain sense. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, pay tell us for what we already did and put in open source code. I'm saying, pay, pay somebody to, you know, Mm -hmm. Just copy that block of code, integrate it into Mendel, and uh, add tests according mm -hmm. to whatever testing you know threshold we want to set for mm -hmm. contributors to Mendel. Yeah. And so I, I agree. I mean that would that would make sense, and I, I would also say um, that those chains that have implemented that, and it seems like Telos perhaps has solved a lot of those issues. They should be the ones being able to bid on this at, at first hands, in, in my opinion, anyways, I would not see that as a conflict or I would not see that as preferred. I would actually see it as a good business decision and probably faster to achieve the result that we're looking to achieve. Yeah, just Absolutely. because those developers are going to be, are most likely going to be more familiar with it so they can achieve it faster and, you know, they don't have to learn it and learn what's being happened, done uh, and then, and then implement it. But well, and it makes sense. I think it's just more efficient. Like for us, and I would imagine any chain in the situation that we're describing, you, we have our own version of those contracts. We're constantly applying our changes on top of Mandel. We're actively doing that right now. So we're going to be like irrelevant of this. We're going to be like removing our implementation of it to accept in the implementation that's then in Mandel. That's going to help us because it reduces the amount of you know drift we have with our changes, right? Um, and we're already going to be in that code anyway. So. There's there's overlap there, there's familiarity there, and uh, yeah, it makes sense. Any other uh, topic of discussion for this item? Uh, I'll put a due date of next Thursday to have. I guess there are two, uh, or I'll put it for now th Thursday. It doesn't mean that it needs to be done by Thursday, but I'll put for next Thursday the two essentially items that came out of this discussion. One is further define the ad hoc items. Uh, so complete the list, but focusing on the ad hoc items, not on the items that uh, were found in blue papers. Other than the exception to that would be uh, the core plus unsellable RAM, which needs to be further defined. And then the standalone uh, report, uh, uh, or I guess um, a summary of where we're at status information uh, for the uh, uh, contract pays uh, side of things. Is that acceptable for everyone? Yeah, uh, there's a there's only I believe um, just going to it right now. I think there's um, we're dropping the P2P code rewrite for now. It's defined until uh, we advance more with the fast finality and trustless uh, IBC. Um, there's there's uh, improved token standards. I'm happy to write that one because uh, I think I'm the one who put that there um, in that list. Uh, for the other ad hocs in there, um, I mean, we, we, we can get started whenever uh, we want to finish them, but they're, they're quite low in the list. Like it's, uh, these are going to be essentially uh, 18, 19 and 20. Um, so, uh, so it's not, not, not a big rush, I would think. Uh, if anyone wants to tackle them, um, I guess like a, uh, can, can raise your hand and, uh, and do it, but it's, uh, we, we can, we'll, we'll revisit that list before we're, uh, I guess like a, we get what was the second one, one. Young? Peer-to-peer -peer code rewrite is on on pause. Yeah. And what was the second one? Uh, the other one, the one that I'm gonna I'm gonna do is uh, improve token standards. That one's on pause, or that one you're doing? Uh, I'll be doing. Yeah. Okay, so the only one on pause is the peer-to-peer -peer code rewrite for now. 
Correct. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. And that uh, that leaves us with uh, three pending ones, which are ADAC 9, 10, and 5 state proofs and full validation with partial storage, which I believe is uh, AREGS. E I think, I think he, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It used to be called uh, uh, AREGS VRAM concept, but uh, he changed the name now. So forget about that. That one is done, or at least uh, uh, well in the way. Uh, that leaves only uh, the store concept and uh, read only actions. These would be the only ones uh, left to define. And those are numbers what? Uh, 19 nine and 20. 10? 19, 19 and 20. And 20. Yeah. So 9, 10, and 5 are done. 9, uh, nine is done. Uh, 10 is done. Um, and uh, le uh, the, the other one you were saying was? Uh, well, I guess uh, 5. 5, I think, is the five. third one you had mentioned. We're okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, I, I was talking at the list of these uh, 22 community rankings. Uh, five is wallet application registry, but we're we're just going to reference the the one the, the blue, blue paper. paper. Okay. Yeah. So the the two that are needing to be done are ad hoc number 19 and 20. Uh, well, ad, ad hoc number 10 and ad hoc five, which are in that list. Uh, number two, okay. 15, 10 and uh, five. Gotcha. 19 and 20. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So number 10 and five. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's why. What? Okay. What is the REG VRAM concept renamed to now? I'm putting it back in the original sheet as the new name. I, it's, I'm called, leaving. it's called state proofs and full validation with partial state storage. Oh my God. <laughs> state proofs. State proofs and full validation. Yep. With partial state storage. Got it. Thank you. We don't need to write the blue paper there because it's uh, that was long enough. <laughs> yeah, like in one right, sentence, next. Yeah, the paper. Uh, so I guess I, I guess oh that's uh yeah that that's that's pretty much done for for these. Uh, all of these will need uh, I guess like uh, reviews. So far, um, I don't uh, like we've written these overviews, but nobody's really reviewed them. Uh, and uh, I was asked, for example, by Jeff to. Um, to uh, work on his, uh, uh, with him on the uh, RFP for fast finality. Uh, but since uh, I, I don't think anyone reviewed my fast finality one, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, just unsure if uh, we shouldn't take that step first. Uh, uh, so so it, it really, it's, it's, it's up to us how we want to proceed. Uh, I would recommend that we also assign like a kind of different person to review these just, just to make sure that uh, everyone agrees with these definitions and, and whatnot, like if there's uh, something that's not clear. Uh, some of them are, are maybe not also like, a, uh, I guess, like a... Uh, as defined as others or as clear as others. Uh, so that's why I would probably suggest like some sort of a, a review of these before we uh, we go straight to RFPs. But uh, oh, you know, guys, where did you did you do your additional faster finality work in that in that directory where Jeff was holding them for the RFPs, or did you um, did you have a uh, separate? Because I thought I saw it when we were on another call with you on the scalability bluffs yeah. call earlier this week. You had a separate document that didn't look like the Correct. document. Where is Correct. that? How do we find that one? Uh, I haven't published it yet. We're still uh, working on it. It's not uh, not uh, just final, but it's it's getting there. It's getting okay. quite close. Um, this is essentially like a, a, a pretty much almost an academic pay, uh, paper when uh, uh, Arag and I started discussing the um, the faster finality. We agreed that uh, all of these kind of general postulates and and whatnot should be uh, expressed as mathematical proofs uh, before. So, because um, uh, it's, it's kind of like if you look at all of these consensus mechanisms, typically they come up, they come with some sort of a, a paper that can explain how these conditions are met and uh, why they cannot like uh, stall the chain or, or or break and whatnot. I think it's really important as a preliminary document uh, to any of these proposals. So, um, so yeah, so that's uh, that that's uh, but that, that that should be done uh, reasonably soon. Like uh, it's mostly editing at this point. Um, and uh, we'll be able to present the first draft of that. Uh, it's uh, it, it probably goes a bit beyond the RFP because I, uh, RFP is an, a separate document uh, that um, uh, Jeff shared with me that, that that's mostly based off the uh, general review of fast finality. But uh, yeah, like it's uh, uh, it's all coming along quite nicely. Just that's why a few we're more days and then... interested in it. We probably want to steal parts of what you're doing in that paper and stick it in the RFP because. 
we felt the RFP so. is a little bare bones. It's not I good agree. enough. The, that agree. paper just is not in depth enough. No, I agree, and uh, definitely it's going to be. Uh, I'm just <laughs> just finishing it to uh, to uh, like that, that. That kind of started as a collection of more or less random thoughts that gradually now uh, and discussions like Eric and I have been going for, uh, and now Henry, uh, one of our guys, also like uh, is part of the discussion. So we've just been going back and forth and kind of kind of converging to the like, to a final uh, workable thing. But it's uh, it's good. It's going to be good. Uh, okay. Just uh, just a couple more days. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's great. That is, you know, doing all that math work is a project unto itself for the proofs. And then, you know, that allows us to do the actual implementation. Um, I I don't know. I'm not going to be able to verify that math. Um, I know that that uh, ENF has, uh, I think, a PhD in cryptography or something or is is there going to be a review an internal review process just by another person on that um, well we we, what are we, thoughts? we do uh, with ux we do have four phds uh either in math or uh cryptography or uh finance okay. so i mean like they kind of like oh uh, i've been have been working for the last few years and in, in crypto in general so happy to uh right. to have uh have them uh help out and that, that's actually what we're doing right now like a uh, uh, Eric was uh, asking for mathematical proof of all these things, and I agree it's quite important. So, just pulled our guys uh, to help out on that front. Uh, but in in general, I think I think it should even go further than that, where we should probably make that the document public at some point and um, uh, request like uh, input from the community in general. Yeah, um, open review, peer review, review peer as review. Our, as, as some of our some of our blockchain colleagues. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Care a lot about. Uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> but this is but this well, well, is the case. This is the case when you do want a peer review, peer review. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When it's when it's cryptography, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Very impressive. You're doing that, by the way, and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing what smart people say about it. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, so 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 I mean that's that that's definitely one there. Uh, we might also have to do one for uh, for IBC um, because it's kind of like the same uh, like very theoretical type of uh, uh, of approach. Right. Where everything depends on a bunch of other things, and you have to kind of make sure that the, <laughs> the math is correct and whatnot. Uh, there might also be other of uh, these um, um, points that may require papers like that. Although like these are definitely the, the two right. that would. I would propose for this group moving forward that that be our modus operandi when we have when we have hardcore mathematics or cryptography or anything that we set a the high standard for our group um, to you know measure five times and cut once. Um, yeah. If we don't, there's you know it's it's that's something I'd rather I'd rather err on the side of too much uh you know too much checking yeah. and just let's make sure in the future we always think of of the math or the proofs or the or the cryptography or whatever as its own project that has to be completed before you know before the uh the actual technical implementation is done i would propose yeah i i second that uh, just uh, one thing, uh, kind of a little bit related, uh, and I mean, maybe uh, you guys uh, at Telos uh, have an idea. I think one of these two Scalability Plus calls so far, uh, at least one of them, I don't think we had anyone from Telos representing. Um, and uh, it would probably be good if you guys could could, could delegate someone uh, to, be, to be there on these calls, just because uh, there's quite a bit of discussion that's going on. Mostly uh, so far, it's been uh, between me on the UX side, uh, Stan on the UX side, and uh, Areg on the ENF side. But it would probably be good to have someone from 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 Delos to chip in as well, whenever possible. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for mentioning that, and I and I agree. I think the reason that is that exists is because um, in the early days, uh, Telos folks were. In- you know, taking part in a whole lot of things. And we were looking, you know, in a whole lot of those working groups and we we're just looking for, <laughs> looking for things, you know, to, to not be caught, you know, now that this to, to, you know, not be sort of Telos led or whatever. So we were really happy when you guys took that on now that it's an actual, now that it's an actual group of four chains 
you know, it, and we we're talking about those things uh, and it's less exploratory. Um, I think it, make, it totally makes sense. So we'll, we'll have to find somebody. Um, we'll task Kirsten with figuring out the right person or maybe Jesse with figuring out who the smart team should be on. So thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, no, no worries. Uh, also, with um, with regards to that, um, I, I, we're, we're kind of still, I guess, on the first uh, agenda item. But um, there's a uh, we, we like I said, we have these other uh, now descriptions to um, to uh, to review, and um, I guess we should probably get get started also, like in discussing um, in discussing them in that group, and not just make it about fast finality, but. Uh, we have synchronous call that's quite high on the list as well, and then um, gonna have at some point like a, I guess like a um, trustless IBC and and all of that. Like um, so, so, so there's gonna be the like more broader discussions about some of these other topics um, that are gonna be uh, uh, gonna be happening. So, um, so even 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 if you don't have anything to say with regards to fast finality, you'll probably have uh, opinions on the others. All right, just in the uh, spirit of, of moving things along, I think we've uh, gone on quite long with the top 20 item list. I think we're good. Uh, if there's anything else to add to that, we can continue the discussion in the channel. If not, if everybody's okay, I'll just move to the next item. Um, the, uh, I guess the other one should be an easy one. Jeff, uh, I'm guessing at this point, you've added the developers from uh, all chains onto the current GitHub. You mean Ted? Yes. Th what did I call you? Uh, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I meant Ted. Yes. So um, Guillaume has given me uh, a list, and I added them. I realize now I didn't have Jesse, um, uh, who is Poplexity, um, and somehow it's giving it's giving me a bit of a trouble adding him. I'm trying to put him into the. Oh, I need to buy a seat. Nice UI here. Um, so while I have most of the people added, I think what we're missing is um, we are missing someone from, uh, I'm, I'm missing uh, Lucas. And uh, Lucas, have you given me um, your GitHub account to add you? Let me send it to you right now. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying. I I have uh, Jesse as an outside collaborator. I realize he needs to be in Mandel Dev or Mandel Admin, and for whatever reason, I'm getting an error when I'm trying to add him right now. I probably have to move him into the organization or something. He's an outside collaborator. I can switch that as well and put him inside the uh, organization as well. Um, uh, and then I'll add uh, Lucas and Guillaume has two people. Uh, and, and again, Lucas, if you have others, please, if you just send me their GitHub account, I can add them as well. And if you wanted more than just Jesse Douglas, um, please let me know. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to make us buy extra seats, but, uh, but I, I would like to be able to have some visibility in there. My sure. GitHub is just Douglas, Douglas Horn. Is there an underscore? Mm -hmm. There is nope. No, nope. All right. I will get you in there. Thank you. Yes, I'm just going to leave this item open and that next week we can close it uh, once we confirm that everybody's good. Thank you. Uh, next item on the list uh, wasn't due today, but uh, I guess, Aaron, do you have a, any update for the SDK uh, bid? I have been working on the grant framework version of it which is a lot more in depth. And I met with Jeff earlier this week to talk about ideas on how to form the roadmap side of that. Um, the RFP is a completely different angle of it. Uh, I started on the grant side of things because I was asked a couple, I think maybe like a week or two before this RFP thing, the side of it came up. Um, and I'm not exactly sure, this proposal has been written in multiple ways, but it's always been the, this is the proposal of how it's going to be done. And now on this side, the RFP needs to be created on, here's the requirements and the goals. Um, is this, I guess I'm looking for 
is this being created as an example or what is this being created for? Uh, you're actually bidding. Well, it wouldn't be an RFP then. Uh, no, it wouldn't be the RFP because the RFP would be used writing yes, the, to ask the, for a bid. the data to ask somebody to bid. Whereas in this case, what we're saying is please bid, which is, yeah. which is why when, I think when you asked last week, you were saying, would I be able to use what I use in the grant framework and uh, at face value anyways, I think the answer is yes, because the grant framework, you are saying, hey, please, uh, I'm bidding for this. All right. Did you get um, did you get the because um, I um, I got from Jeff and Ted the, the, that RFP template. Uh, did you get a similar document from them? We may not have sent that to Aaron. We no, can't. But I mean, the question really, Aaron shouldn't write that. Jeff and no. I should write that, and Aaron should respond to it. Right. But, but it, I mean, but uh, it's, just, it's just we're not asking. For no, but it's, that. it's just we're it's not asking it's, for um, a proposal. No, but I mean, it's. Uh, I understand. It's just that it's. It's. It's kind of a. It's kind of a. I, I'm, and really, depending on how you guys want to use it um, as a, the general uh, tool, but it's kind of more like a form uh, that says what you have to submit to make a bid. So I think. I think for consistency, if we're going to use this in general, even if we, uh, even if Graymas gets the 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 the, the, the gets awarded the work, if they provide that form, uh, we can just just put it up with all the others and then we're we have a, a, a consistent process across all the um, mm. and uh, I, I guess I guess from 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 what that document looks like it seems to me also like it, it probably um, uh, I guess like uh, solve some of these uh, uh, transparency and or legal uh, issues about about the whole process so it, it feels like we should probably uh, just for consistency keep it uh, like for everyone that, that, that wants to participate or we adjust it so that everyone is able to work with it. I agree in my experience, skipping a step because it's not necessary always comes back and bites you in the ass in the future. So a consistent so, process is good, especially when, especially when it's a, uh, you know, almost a no bid deal like, like this yeah. is. Uh, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's just, just, just to confirm then. Form. Phil, yep. But just to confirm, so uh, we've gone to the original authors of the blue papers, and we've asked them to bid on the items so that we can, re so so that we can receive bids. So sh are you yeah. saying that we should go back and ask them to fill out the request for proposal form, which we still haven't completed yet, well, for them to uh, do so? To, to me, to me, I mean, like it feels that this 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 like well. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys. Uh, well, Ted, Ted knows because uh, he was uh, was part of um, um, who was working on these. But essentially, like the way it looks like, it's uh, we have to kind of create that document, which is a, a questionnaire, really like a form that people fill uh, when they want to bid on something. So in this case, in this case, really is what we're saying is whoever wrote the blue paper should probably just write that, that questionnaire and fill it and submit oh. that as their bid. I think that I, I agree with you in principle. I think that does skip one minor step. And one step is Jeff and I should make, read the blue paper, make the template. It's a template right now. So it's a generic template that will be used for every yeah. single RFP. Fill in the key parts out of the blue paper for the SDKs and then give it to Aaron for him to reply what he's going to do in response to the RFP. That would be skipping no steps. So Aaron doesn't fill the whole thing out and answer it himself. We fill out a basic RFP using what's in the blue paper. Aaron answers it, and we're done. That's what should yeah, be done. I, but that's even better. Yeah. And we we have not done that yet. Jeff and I have not done that. We started to work on faster finality, but faster not finality kind of took a life of its own as Arig and and Guillaume started doing mathematical proofs, and we were kind of all left in the dust going. Okay, we need to wait for them to complete, or we're, you know, the little amount we have in the faster finality document right now isn't good enough. And so we need what they're doing with, with Guillaume's document that he'll share soon um, to finish that one. So the next one in line would be the SDKs, but we were going to try to show this group what it looked like with faster finality, which we, sh we should have done is then transitioned over to the SDK one. Um, uh, and we'll, Jeff and I'll start that immediately. We'll move to the SDK 
get it basically ready so that Aaron then fills out the response to the FT, the RP. Does that make sense that I can that I makes perfect sense? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and uh, I mean, like on on the side of uh, the RFP for fast finality, anyway, we're um, we can do it in parallel because uh, uh, as soon as someone essentially reviews that that overview that's uh, already uh, out there, uh, I'm I'm very comfortable finishing this uh, like the, the the template basically. I take the template and plugging in uh, the um, that that overview as the input to kind of uh, create so the, the, the RFP might... itself. So the question is, is actually the deadline for that faster finality RFP uh, to be presented was today. So am I to understand that that is not complete? Correct, it, because Correct. we're waiting on the work that Guillaume and Arag were doing. We needed their help. Like we, Jeff and I can't write an RFP for faster finality based on our knowledge of EOSAO, right? So we needed some help. Arag was starting to help Jeff, but then he started to work with Guillaume. And so it kind of moved in a direction of getting a lot deeper. And we're waiting for that to be able to plug that into the RFP because the short little paper that's written right now, in my opinion, is not enough to put into an RFP. We do have a short paper that anyone can look at right now for faster finality. And, and in my opinion, it's not enough to write an RFP on. Okay. I mean, it, it, unless we knew we were going to give it to say UX or WAX or tell us to implement or give it to the ENF, you know, guys, then, uh, then I think we'd be safe. But if we're literally putting this out as an RFP, you know, and the, the nice thing is uh, ENF and, and UX are kind of co-writing what they want to begin with. How different will it be than the information that is being asked in the grant framework currently? There's nothing being asked for faster finality in the grant framework. Do you mean in the no, blue paper? No, but the question, oh, no, never mind. Um, so the, the shell, not the content. So the shell of the RFP would be similar to the, the shell, to, to the grant framework form. No. The no. content will obviously be different. So no, so not at all either. No, the, the, the template for the RFP looks nothing like the application for the grant framework. They don't gotcha. look just. Okay. So then I guess Aaron on hold. Yes, Aaron, uh, yes, I agree. Aaron is on hold and we should give Aaron an RFP that I think we have enough and I'll take responsibility for this. I think we have enough information. If we had made SDK our pilot case to get everybody an RFP to look at and Aaron to give back, we could have gotten that done. But faster finality came out of ad hoc. So we had nothing written down other than two words, faster finality, to write the RFP. And even Jeff got it partially done. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, not. and I mean, uh, um, Jeff is not here, but I want to say like he's, uh, like your work is exactly on point. Like the only part that's missing for faster finality are the faster finality specific uh, items, but the rest, the rest looks very good. And I think you can, can plug that into SDK uh, quite, quite easily. So. Yes. Yeah. So we could have done SDK. The SDK blue paper part was good enough. We could have transported that into the RFP and given Aaron an RFP, which he could have replied to. But we all as a group picked faster fidelity first. That was probably a mistake. I should have said, no, 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 let's not do that. But we, Jeff was running a parallel initiative to kind of flesh out all the ad hoc levels. Actually, he was doing all 20 of them. But and faster finality was had been partially worked. It was just still a little too thin. And that's where Arag and Guillaume started to make it complete. But that work is not completed yet. So, the so should I go back to the blue papers, uh, blue paper teams? Um, so last week I went to the blue paper teams and said, hey, these two or three items were selected as a priority in the coalition. Please bid. Should I go back to them and say, please don't bid. Wait, we're going to send you an RFP for those items. Uh, that's up to this group. Um, I think <clears throat> the general feeling I'm hearing from this group is that would make the process uniform. It is a lot of work. We don't have any product managers to start cranking these RFPs out. And, you know, it, it is a template, so it's not terribly hard, but it's Jeff and I kind of trying to do these in addition to all of our day jobs. But that makes the process public. It can, it all can be published. It can all be viewable um it just will slow things down i mean we can we can kind of 
circle back with the RFPs so that we don't slow people down. But it would be good to know the teams that said, yes, we want to work on that. We can maybe get their RFPs knocked out first so that we don't slow them down. Like Aaron, obviously, yeah. we can get Aaron's done sometime by next week. And Aaron can, you know, it, it'll be easy for Aaron to reply to it. And Why don't we, why, why don't we do exactly that? Like, um, essentially, you work on, on Aaron as the, uh, uh, like, the beta, if you want, and the, the first one, um, the template. Uh, if you can just, just have the other people, like, uh, hold for a week week and a half um until uh until we we had a chance to review the one for uh for Aaron if it's if it's good and if um if everything is fine then we just apply the same methodology to all the others that we want to um get our bids on based on the priorities that we want to do so I think we it, it's it's only going to be like a handful anyway because we were saying uh we would probably like only do like five or something this uh initially so um so it's uh, uh I mean, for these five, it probably probably it's probably worth it to um, to, uh, to proceed like that. Just wait for the first one, uh, based off um, like SDKs, and then apply the same methodology for for the other four, and uh, take it from there. Okay, so I'll I'll reach out uh, and I'll let them know to essentially do pause. You have, do you have a short list of the ones that have said they are interested and will work it because we should make uh, their the next ones we should we should knock those out in sequence right after we're done with Aaron's just keep going down the list all of them they all agree I thought so I thought the audit guy said they would not slow miss won't but sentinel said yes okay um and then API I believe they said yes to all of them uh wallet they said yes to all of them it's Aaron and basically it's Aaron um and then um uh uh, which on uh, core plus, I guess contract pay is still on hold. Uh, yeah, those are uh, so the, far down the, the list. One of them is already done. So it's basically just one uh, is the unsellable RAM. So I'll go back for the unsellable RAM and say, just on hold, we'll send you an actual RFP. Okay, I, that's fine. I just need to know so that we don't leave people um, uh, hanging and or worse, they're doing work and it's useless. I mean, we could make an alternate decision. It's up to this group as to what's done. The alternate decision is, if the original authors decided that they were going to do the work, we could skip writing the RFP to them. Uh, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with us doing the RFP. Um, and I'll just go back and say, listen, we're okay. going to send you the RFP. And that way you, it's not really wasted to work anyways. If they're preparing a bid, they're going to reuse the content and put it in the format that we're asking for um, through the RFP that that's okay. But then that way it maybe gives them a little bit more leeway as well. We didn't set any dates or anything like that regardless. So this would formalize the process. Let's get it right from the, the beginning. It'll still leave the trail of there was an RFP, there was a bid, um, and, and, and we went forward and such. But the it, answer it, is all of them. Okay. And it'll be <laughs> nice because we can publish the RFPs and make them, you know, put yes. them somewhere where the public can go in. And again, just makes us look so much more transparent than block one of it's a very open mm -hmm. process. Here's how it works. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it is possible that the bid that they submit, we ultimately reject, right? Like, yes. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna fix unsellable RAM. I want seven million dollars. <laughs> Good luck with that. See you later. And then we go out to public tender, right? And the work wouldn't be wasted from the RFP. And there would also be the trail as to why we rejected the the, the bid in the first place. Yes, right. And I mean, I'm of course, there's that. there's there's priorities as well, like in the sense that, uh, for example, SDK, which is uh, very high on the list, um, it is a perfect case because chances are it's going to be like approved very quickly uh so we'll have a um, um it's, it's it's going to be transparent we're going to have like the the, the precedent in a sense and then everything else yep. uh, will derive from there yep. i like that um all right so we'll move on to the next item if that's okay uh we've lost uh lucas by the way and but we still have uh quorum and uh, we've lost Douglas as well but jesse's here so we we do still have um telos uh, uh ux and uh eos on the line uh next item we'll try to go a little bit faster identification of feature delta differences for the four chains versus mandel um that i guess is ongoing uh was there anything to report on that uh, so Lucas was supposed to verify for Wax, but he's not here. So I'll just highlight it so that uh, we can um, find out next week. Tell us no changes, so we should be good. And UX sees this as a useful activity, no urgent requirements. So you're good, I guess, Guillaume, on your end? Yes. 
Okay, yep. so we'll all just move this item to next it's week. Main, it's, it's, on the it's agenda main, for next week. It's mainly wax because uh, um, everyone else is uh, com like comfortable keeping uh, managing their own changes separately. Gotcha. And this was for uh, the core, the base layer, or the contracts? Uh, yeah, both essentially. Like it's um, uh, Atelos is running vanilla uh, Yasayo. We're running a slightly modified version, but that's like changes are very easy to, um, to port upstream. And um, Wax, Wax was going to verify it. Uh, and as far as the uh, system contracts for each chain, I think we're already like way too far off to uh, even consider uh, <laughs> maintaining. Like uh, maybe, maybe with some exceptions. For example, Rex, uh, because like um, I think I think we don't use it, but the other three chains, uh, I think believe I believe use it. Uh, there might be some little um, things here and there, but in, in general, like the system contracts are where we're going to have the most differences. So like these are going to be the more difficult to uh, to justify maintaining as a as a uh, as a group, I guess. Like unless unless everyone still uses the same version, or at least a majority of of chains users. Yeah, we're, we're vanilla, you know, Node OS, and yeah, we have changes in the contracts, and we're fine maintaining. Yeah, exactly. So, so same for us. We with that small difference you know, is just Wax that we don't know. Uh, Wax has they. I know they have their uh, own RSA implementation. Uh, built and there are no DS, so that's that's probably what what Lucas was set to verify. Uh, well, let's just keep it on the agenda. We'll, we'll revisit it next week. Maybe you can move that card to the top of the column. Exactly. I think that Lucas does get off early every call. At least he does seem to have a conflict at the at the hour. So if we mm -hmm. start with him, then we'll get that reviewed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, now we're switching over to the in-progress items. Uh, we don't have, but I can talk about this one. So uh, proposal brand development. Uh, we're having a meeting, if I'm not mistaken, next Monday. Um, and so we should be able to give uh, an update uh, next week. I believe that next Monday, and, and maybe Aaron, you know a little bit more. I'm, I'm not too certain. I believe next Monday we're actually going over the proposed um, names, correct? I'm not entirely sure because the messages that they left were that the decisions we made in this next meeting were going to lead to the names that would be proposed. So I don't know if we're going to hear about them. So gotcha. perhaps I think is okay. my so, thought. So update to come. Either way, no, no yeah, update yeah. today. Uh, so we'll leave that on there. Um, still, it seems to still be on track though for uh, the uh, May 12th. I guess deadline and then the idea would be that we would be coming back to this group i think we should go in camera at that time um, to showcase what the i guess the ultimate names uh proposals would be and then this group would um uh i guess determine through voting what they would want to to have it uh communication strategy and updates brandon so i guess that's in progress brandon do you want to just give a an update on that i guess that's an ongoing item yeah, we're just kind of hanging tight um, until the group establishes priorities. Probably sometime after this next um, biweekly update comes out, we'll um, I'll get a Twitter Spaces on the calendar, and that might coincide really nicely with maybe we'll know a bit more about the naming and can do it at that time. Awesome. Uh, anything else on that front? Not on that particular item. Okay, so create status update template for work group. Um, so I'm not sure what this item is. I I, um, I can show you, I'll put in the chat. Uh, I'm not sure everyone will be able to see it. Maybe Eve, you and I can take this offline because it, it's, it's, it's making it where there is a status report that's available in basically, uh, a, you know, in Google Slides. Um, that shows each week where the status was. You can look oh. back. It's something Jeff is already doing for like buy wire and, and uh, mm -hmm. recovery and yield and stuff like that. I, it, I don't know that it's needed for this group. And the question is, is later, would we want to be able to publish these types of documents, weekly statuses and track that? Um, I think it would be better if, if Jeff and I showed you um, I, I would say that just no, the little bit I know Douglas, I, I don't think he would he would find it of great value, um, but it would be great to first at least see what you think of it. We haven't really shown you them. Um, I like them. 
I uh, <laughs> so I know which ones you're talking about, and I I like them. So I think for larger files that are ongoing, um, so not for these little uh, cards where it's kind of one status item. For a longer project, once let's say I think we assign a um, let's say we assign a contract, we assign a, a for faster finality or for SDKs or whatever. Uh, managing or helping a project manage the the contract that we've assigned, I think those are really really useful. Yeah, I mean, he would make one. Uh, I, I don't know. I can. I'll send you a link right. I'll I'll put a link if you want. I'll put a link in the meeting right now. And I just don't know everyone has uh, access to it. And it this is the one for Bywire, and you can see every week a new one gets updated into it. If you get down to the bottom of it, it's the one we went over yesterday with Bywire. And he would literally do that for this entire group, manage it to where there was a snapshot every week of where the status was. So this mirror board would get snapshotted every single week into a Google slide so that you could go back in history and see, you know, it just, it's, it just depends if you felt that this group had value. I, I didn't think that, I, I felt like the mirror board was kind of good enough, but it was something that I don't know if he's already showed it to Kirsten as well, because it would take Jeff and Kirsten to kind of manage keeping it up to date every week, have it ready. And then all it did, did was it made a snapshot that showed it would be after today, they'd snapshot where we got to. And then after every single week, then you'd have the history, which you could step through. I don't know if you mm -hmm. looked at that link. So the question is, if you don't feel that's valuable for this, then we could just kill this item. Uh, and well, I would say Jeff uh, Kirsten is the chair or the, the de facto chair that we've appointed. Jeff is kind of the de facto co-chair that uh, unfortunate that neither of them are here today. But I would say they should talk and see if they if it would add value to them as, as co-chairs and because it, it's a tool for them to help them lead the meeting to the rest of the group. Uh, so, so I would I would default back to them whether or not they yeah. think it's useful because we wouldn't be using it. We wouldn't be filling out the information they would be for our needs or for our benefit. The, the tool is supposed to be so that the uh, the executive leaders have a place to reference the material. So yes. you can be on. What I'm saying is Jeff yes. and Kirsten would be filling out that information sure. and perhaps sure. showcasing sure. it during these meetings. Um, so well, I leave that to them to make that decision as to whether or not they yeah. think it's useful to essentially chair this group. And then us, I wouldn't great. see, I mean, worst case scenario, if we don't like it, we just don't go to them. We don't read them. Right. So it, they would they would still run this meeting out of the mirror board. They would just have that. What would happen is, because there's really no difference, right? Let's say uh, Guillaume missed the meeting. He could go to the mirror board and see the status, or he could go and find this slide. Because gotcha. at least immediately after the meeting, they would agree up until the very next week. Gotcha. So, I would then definitely see value in that because going back to this mirror board and seeing kind of getting a snapshot of where we're at is and me leading the meeting right now is not really intuitive. I would much prefer a one pager like what you're describing. Okay. All right. And from my point of view, and I don't know, um, for some reason I can't, uh, can't open this chat while it's sharing the screen. I don't know why. Um, so I can't showcase what, uh, Ted is, is, Unless, Ted, you want to send the link elsewhere, maybe in the group, then I'll be able to open it and drag it on screen. Uh, but um, And I guess that would be the question more for, for Guillaume and Jesse, whether or not you, you would see value in being able to have that summary snapshot. I, I know I would. Yeah, but I, I can't pull it up. Right. Uh, I, just, I just stuck it in the coalition group. There you go. And I'll try to bring it on screen. Uh, you should see it on screen now. Uh, so it's basically just a dashboard report with a, hey, we're green, we're yellow, or we're red for, you know, it gives us a very, very, very high level um, snapshot of where we are on, on certain items. Instead of the Miro, the Miro is quite detailed. It, it, you really need to go card by card. This is, is a much higher level snapshot of status. So this is what Jeff was referring to with that card. I don't know if he and Kirsten had gotten a chance to discuss it. Um, and it's it, it would snapshot the Miro each. Well, I guess this is something that Jeff would do on his own or would he need um, uh, Kirsten to be able to produce this? He, well, 
typically what he tries to do is get like Francis to do the recovery one and someone from Yield to do mm-hmm. that one. In what it usually falls back to is part of why we're looking to hire a support person for Jeff is when they don't have it done, he can, they can, cause they're, they're managing it in 17 different tools, literally that that person would scrape them all into the consolidated format. So, you know, everything the ENF is involved in is in this format and you can just go look in one spot and say, here's where each of the different threads are at. And so that's why his, he wanted to do that. And the difference is this isn't, truly an ENF, this is part of the coalition. So does the coalition want to adopt an ENF standard for this thread is, is kind of the question. Um, I, I say yes, I like it, but I'll, I'll leave it to Guillaume and Jesse to see if, if they'd like. What, what is, so 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 what, what is it like entails? It's, uh, it's, is it just like, um, you know, like a, a different way to present the information, a different software, or is it um, something it, that's going to... It's a Google slide. I mean, it's manually oh. entered. Okay, in. manually, right. Yeah, so it would be up to Kirsten and Jeff to update it with the key stuff that came out of the meeting from the Miro board each week to gotcha. capture it. The Miro board and it should mostly agree. There'll be more detail in the Miro board. So this is kind of a high level rolling snapshot produced every single week after the meeting. That So you could look back and see what happened every week if this had been going on. Whereas the Miro board just shows you currently where things are at versus snapshotting where they were at the end of each week. Yeah, I mean, it seems- And not uh, as high seems, level. It seems quite useful to uh, it's like a, um, expedite these meetings. So, um, so I'm, I'm all, I'm all for it. And, um, I guess it, it's probably like, how long does it take to prepare that? Like um, an hour or two, I guess, or. It should no. be that long because all they're really doing is adding new items or statuses. The key milestones are generally kind of set. Uh, and then you're just talking about what got done in the highlights, what's coming up in the upcoming activities. And then if anything is blown up like a risk or an issue that you want to note that's happening. So it, it yeah, can, I mean, should be 15 seems like a no brainer a week. Yeah. Seems like a no-brainer. I I uh, although I don't think we have as much concern here in this group, but it, it, you know, generally in crypto, you, if you provide a date and you don't hit it on the dot, you get eaten live. So at least to tell us, we've always gone with milestone driven and very similar to what you have here. We go red, yellow, green. We say what's in progress. We say what's been completed. We don't give dates. We don't even give quarters because people take the quarter to mean the first day of the next quarter is the deadline before failure. So, yeah, I think everybody at Telos would be in support of this type of progress report. And uh, well, this does have dates for the key milestone. It has the plan date and the actual date. So I don't know if that would be uncomfortable. I was I was focusing on the colors. That's where my eyes go. But uh, <laughs> the, the I mean, key milestones is. I mean, that is. You know, we would have to change that out if you didn't want to have that because there are some dates in the mirror boards as well. Like we're putting dates in there for things. Um, I don't know that we have a lot of items that are really long term items in here that we've given real dates to, to be honest. Well, we would once we start assigning contracts for the, the actual priorities. And that's where I see a lot of advantage of that as well. It's not just this part right now, the Miro board, but also once we start assigning contracts, managing those contracts along and then being able to report back to our individual communities in a very concise format. Here's where faster final of these apps. Here are the risks as we see them. Here's the general idea. Here's, you know, progress report, like all in one. The, the idea is that it's all in one page, whereas the Miro board right now is now I'm zooming out so it's one page, but it's actually not one page because I can expand every single item. This thing is just one page. That's it. Yep. Um, and I guess there's no cost to this group because we're taking that on. Correct. Well, Kirsten would potentially be helping Jeff do it. And that's something I think, I don't know that Kirsten is aware of that. In Jeff's mind, Kirsten might be doing the whole thing in my mind. So let's no. let's get them both to speak and, and for Kirsten to, um, to to chime in. Yeah. And, and hopefully both of them are here next week and then we can actually have this discussion. But I guess in theory, from what I hear from uh, UX as well as Telos is that in theory, 
um, there seems to be a benefit to, to doing this. And I, I could um, probably yeah. put up a better yeah. example, but that's by wire. Uh, all right, I think these ones are actually done. So that's cool, now we can start moving. Um, communicate payment account procedure. So that's been done. I'm just gonna move that. Uh, invoice information to be sent out to all, uh, that was done. Uh, I'm not sure if Kirsten removes dates here. Uh, I'll let him do that next time. Uh, the create faster finality B RFP document. Uh, we said that it's still in still progress, progress. So I just moved yeah. the date to next week. Uh, organize meeting DLT for Telos RFP proposal and share document in group. Um, so I'm that was, not um, sure what that's referring to. Maybe Jesse has an idea, but uh, I think uh, Douglas said it was the um, uh, essentially like uh, Telos has an RFP uh, system in place already. Uh, and they, uh, oh, they were yeah. offering to show us, kind of oh. give us a demo or something if we wanted to use oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that got scheduled though. That didn't get scheduled. No, so I'll, uh, I'll actually move it to um, just so it's easier. I'll move it to here and I'll say uh, it needs to be scheduled. Yeah, I, I think Kirsten was going to schedule that. Uh, and Jeff and I were, were had expressed interest in seeing that. And I don't know who on um, the Telos side was going to give the demo. I think, Yong, you said you also wanted to be a part of that, right? Yes. And the, the, the to be clear, DLT is Detroit Ledger Technology, the new EOS Detroit brand, and their worker proposal passed uh, today, I just saw a post during this call where, um, so they're funded to do that through the TELUS worker proposal system and they'd probably be the best ones to present. There's also Richard Downing, who's uh, kind of working along with DLT to on the concept. So we would need to coordinate with them so they can present it. And then- uh, Who would we, who would know how to get us in touch with them? Like. Adam Kirsten. No, is wasn't it Kirsten that would organize this is no, what he had said last week. He doesn't, those, the Detroit Ledger Technology Group is something that Telos knows how to get hold of. Like, I don't think he has their phone number or email. I mean, we, know, we know who they are. Uh, yeah. Lovejoy knows them. I know them. We yeah. can get a hold of them. Lovejoy used to be part of that team. Yeah. But <laughs> if you ask Adam, I mean, anybody can schedule it. it, it Kirsten could schedule it. It's just it, Adam, Adam's probably the best one to. Okay. Uh, which Adam are we talking about? Uh, from Detroit, Adam. Um, Zatarski. Okay, I'm not going to write the name. Z, Adam Z. Yes. Uh, because I, I can't, I don't recall how to spell it. Um, and so I guess Adam, uh, so so would it be uh, you, Jesse, to, to make the introduction to Adam, or should I just leave it as Kirsten will organize with Adam? Let's just say Kirsten will organize with Adam. We can try to, I guess, coordinate maybe for him to come on for. 15, 10, 15 minutes on this call or um, however we want to do it. Cool. So I've moved it to um, the agenda. That way it's, it's top of mind uh, next time. Uh, create scalability blue paper, uh, wax to take lead. So that's obviously still in progress. I'm going to change the date on that one. Um, oh, no. I'm breaking things. Um, so the recurring meetings happening, but let's change the date uh, because obviously that's still ongoing. Um, unless, is there anything else? We, we touched upon scalability uh, earlier. So is there anything else to report on that? Not from our end. Nope. Just, it's just um, starting the, the structure for the blue paper. So Lucas said he would, uh, he would do that. I think one thing is that in the ad hoc list from the original voting, the ones that were deemed scalability got color coded yellow. So I don't Correct. know if that's, at least that's worth noting for people that are interested in looking in there. Yeah, I think it's gonna be, uh, ultimately it should be mostly like an editing exercise where we take these overviews uh, that we've written for these five items, I think uh, the scalability plus group and just organize that into a new paper. Cool. cool. Um, the next item we already, uh, I'm going to skip this item because we can finish with that, uh, honor original, uh, contributors. So that's actually still ongoing. I just sent out the message, uh, to say that we will send out the RFPs, 
uh, the formal RFPs for those items. And also I'll move that to next week. Um, and uh, Ted Jeff to create RFPs uh, for each of the uh, 20 priorities. Uh, so that's still ongoing. Uh, I can put a, a due date of, I'll put in two weeks from now, um, just to have that on record or whatever, to, to put a date. Uh, and the only other item then, uh, unless there's anything else, is the ultra contribution. So we, um, uh, j just to confirm, because I guess I'm the one kind of in the middle doing the, the back and forth discussion, um, is the is the idea that I will go back to ultra and uh, say that any contribution that they would want to make would be a voluntary, uh, essentially donation to, and we would include them in the faster finality group regardless, but we're not talking about membership at this stage. Is, is that correct? Yeah, that's my that's my that's my understanding. Like this is uh, this is pretty much what we're what we're offering them. And and would we still include them in the group um, regardless of financial um, uh, contribution, seeing as they've shown an interest in in that particular item? Well, that and the idea is that I mean, then the group would determine um, whether or not the contributions get accepted or or get defined as part of the the. The, the specs, et cetera, essentially. Right. That's what we discussed. Like if they essentially like they, they're welcome to uh, I guess sit on the call and, and listen. If they want to make a um to make like a uh I guess like a uh, a request of how it should be implemented, uh then uh the group will consider it like uh, based on the uh, if it makes sense, if it's uh, easy to do, uh how much are they paying if they if they want to make a donation and whatnot, but it would be considered a donation, yes. Like gotcha. uh, um is that was that your understanding as well, Jesse? Because this one just um I, I yeah, is that was that your understanding as well? It seemed to be my understanding from Lucas as well. Yeah, and I didn't respond in the telegram because I saw other people say what I meant to say. But yeah, I think the ship has left the harbor. Everybody was on the dock when it left and they chose to stay on the dock. And, and you know, we got to do a little sea trial at the very least before we uh, go back and welcome people back on board. We're, we're out here trying to, you know, learn the ropes of, of the coalition for like a season, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, it's a donation and they yeah. know very clearly what we're going to be working on and we welcome anything to help accelerate the things that we've decided to work on. And yeah. uh, we'll have a plan for, you know, returning to Harbor and creating a new uh, manifest. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, uh, on that, uh, Guillaume, can you confirm that, that Darren is still uh, writing up, I guess, a recommended donation or, or based on kind of what the, the formula was, or, or, or are we just going back to them and, and saying, uh, uh, essentially you decide what you want to donate it's a donation um so i guess the question is uh should we basically recompute these values uh with ultra in it and then well, I mean, it was uh, a request of them they said could you please recompute uh okay, what fine. my share would have been but if if we're considering this a donation um then I guess that number becomes somewhat irrelevant, but they did ask for it, so it could still be a baseline. Yeah, no, uh, it makes sense. Essentially, like what, what I guess would, would probably make the most sense is we recompute that table, let's say the way we've done it, but with ultra in uh, the calculation, and then whatever like percentage we, uh, we end up with, once we uh, spec out like um, uh, faster finality and how much budget goes towards that um, by, by answering a proposal, for example, um, we can essentially calculate what their proportion would be, and uh, that would end up being essentially what we uh, what, what they they would pay to participate into that particular item. I think that's probably the best way to um, to go about it. Uh, but yeah, sure, I'll. Uh, I'll I thought that we're not doing numbers. that though. Um, now, well, now you've somewhat confused me because let, let's say the number comes out to I don't know twenty two thousand dollars or whatever it may be, it's somewhat irrelevant. If we go and say, oh, by the way, your share of that, if you actually joined at the onset for that particular item, based on how much it, that item costs compared to the other items, would be twenty two thousand dollars. We're essentially just giving them the very specific menu of this item costs this much, and that I thought that that's what we're trying to avoid. Because uh, it's maybe not, uh, uh, because it's a yeah. donation, so it's 
It's, hey, by the way, you've question. asked the information. Your share of the group was $500,000 um, just <laughs> yeah. because you're asking. But regardless of this, if you want to give financial contribution to, to faster finality, at this point, we're accepting donations, but the number right. is not necessarily related to the cost of joining at the time, which is no longer on the table at this stage. Right. Because uh, the, so, so the ship is, is in the waters and it hasn't gone back to the harbor yet. <laughs> So is that discussion like was that was that like a text from the I mean like a uh, in the the ESO Plus coalition group or uh, no that's just email um, so I, I keep email. asking for them to reply in the main group but they keep replying by email okay <laughs> uh, I mean I mean yeah well I, I'm just not sure what you're asking like if you want if you want us to recompute these numbers uh, like happy to do that no problem. Um, it's just uh, it's just like my, my my understanding is that uh, maybe Darren was suggesting to come up with a formula to give them a proposed contribution or something, but that's uh, I I agree. But then the sentiment that I got from uh, from the responses afterwards was that that essentially was no longer on the table of revisiting membership cost at this stage. Um, I don't. Um, I've, I don't really have a big opinion about it, a, a strong opinion about it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, like if they want to pay some money to uh, to help out, that's great. Um, they can they can they can they can make a donation, uh, but that donation is just like it's a donation, right? The so, donation. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so I guess there's two action items from this. If if we could, because they did request, if we could just get Darren to recompute without doing anything extra, just recompute yeah. what it would have been, just so that they yes. know again. But essentially. I don't think we presented it. So that's the thing. I think the last time we presented numbers, Proton was the fifth one, but uh, Ultra wasn't the fifth one, if I'm right. not mistaken. And yeah. So they actually never got what it would look like if they were in the coalition at this stage. So we would just compute that number just to give it. And then the second action item would be um, whoever is the owner of the scalability, uh, scalability Plus Working Group, if you could invite uh, David as well as Rami um, into the group. And then add them on the weekly calls. Correct. Uh, yep, yep. That, uh, I can do that. No problem. Did so, uh, a, what? A minimum do donation. Like you have to make a donation of at least this much. And it's just a donation. You don't have membership, but you do get to work on faster finality. Otherwise, there, you don't, you know, have you, if you don't set a floor, they could make a donation of you know one dollar. Yeah. Well, so I thought that the donation was somewhat irrelevant in the uh, unless it is. So I'm I'm actually seeking clarification. Um, even if they did do a donation, would we invite them in the scalability plus working group just to to participate and listen in on the calls because they've shown an interest in it? If the answer is no, then I I I would say. The floor makes sense, but if the answer is yes, then the donation could be a dollar. It's just you're cheap if you're giving a dollar, but thank you. I, I thought it was they only got to they got to actively participate in faster finality since they were interested in that. Like they got to have a voice if they made a floor based donation, and then they can sit. Anyone's allowed to sit in scalability plus. We invited all the chains, and they they haven't even come to these calls. We've made all these calls open now, and they're not even showing up. I I'd, I'd say. You know, I, I personally kind of suggested that at this point, um, any amount of money doesn't necessarily get you a vote, but mm -hmm. we've kind of established that everybody's welcome to come have a voice as long as you're, you know, contributing in a healthy manner and, you know, not really disrupting the flow. You know, all chains are welcome to join, participate, observe, you know, their ideas. But then when it comes to like votes, we've that's sh that ship sailed, right? But yeah, we're not we're not going to ignore people that have you know, I would I would assume that Ultra is not going to come with some like left field use case that totally deviates the goals of faster finality. It's a pretty simple, yeah. you know, small number better, make transactions final, right? <laughs> so yeah. then on that, Jesse, see, when you're saying that, then I think we're on the same page. Are you also saying then that regardless of the donation, it's it's irrelevant because even if let's say I'm not talking about the floor now, but let's say it was a high amount for donation, it would still not get them a vote. I, I think so. Otherwise we have to recalculate our votes and figure out you gotcha. know, that, just complicates okay. things. that that would be my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm open to I mean, what, what, what I originally proposed. And um, since we're, since we're not necessarily like exactly in agreement, 
uh, just, I'm just going to repro- repose it again because I think it solves all of the issues, is uh, essentially they can make whatever donation that they want. Doesn't no floor necessarily or anything like that. However, if they want to, um, you know, like have some sort of say how we implement it, then we treat it as a uh, commercial decision. The chain, the, the the coalition basically looks at what Ultra is proposing. If they're saying like, oh, can you just like do that little thing that's not going to cost you anything and it's going to like uh, make it's going to work with our implementation, then probably we're going to be okay, like no problem, even if the donation is small. If they ask us to do like something that's completely out of our way, uh, but they're willing to drop a million bucks for that thing to be done, sure, we'll we'll consider it. So that's uh, that, that that was my opinion. My opinion was was more like uh, we invite them. Uh, they they. They get to uh, to listen to it. If they have any specific requests, uh, they can they can voice them, and then we decide whether or not it's uh, we want to do it. And if if uh, they want to give a donation to um, um, to kind of help uh, nudge us in the right direction, <laughs> I guess like we're we're open to it. It's, um, uh, we don't have to be too formal, I guess. Uh, that's what, that's what I'm saying. That makes sense. It's it's a, it's a fair point. I would hope we just need to talk to them, see what they want. Really, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, we should be we should be very clear. Like, if if there's something that's reasonable, like we're designing something, and somebody that's not donating anything and is not part of the coalition but represents a chain that, you know, is using the software, and they say, hey, if you do it that way, we can't take advantage of it. That breaks us. But here's to your point, something simple that you could just do it slightly different, and it would work for us. Um, yeah. then we should just kind of say, okay, well, that's fair. We're not trying to like box anybody out, even if they didn't pay up or bring their presence to these meetings, um, you know, as a coalition member or whatever, we shouldn't box them out. If they bring something up that's reasonable, we should do it. Then to your point, like, what if what they bring up is like, well, that's a heavy lift. Uh, you know, you're the only one that needs it and you didn't, you know, join the boat when we left the dock. <laughs> uh, then I guess at that point, maybe we do have to discuss, as you said, a commercial driven uh, yeah. approach. That works for me. I would support that. Yeah. You know, it, maybe so, it's case by case. I don't anticipate yeah. ultra and faster finality making us, you know, solve this. So we maybe don't have to solve it now, but consideration Agreed. for later. So I guess yeah, the, the only reason item that. is to add them into the group and then say, listen, it's a donation to give them the recalculated table because they've asked for it for their information. And there's nothing else to do at this stage other than we keep proceeding, and if we'll, we'll deal with whatever when the time comes at that time. Well, we I mean, should be, uh, we should be if clear. You, if, you, if you transfer uh, there, if, if you just send me their uh, email addresses, I'm happy to add them to the call next week, uh, just as a one-time off, like uh, and reevaluate after that. If we, uh, if, if well, if you want to, um, uh, I've. I'll, I'll send you right now their telegram information uh, actually okay. it will, in, in, in the open group if you yeah, just open. scroll up i think it's like the fourth or fifth message up you'll see that i tagged david and um rami far far away uh so if you just want to ask rami or david hey could you please send me your email and so that you can invite them to the group and or take those two handles as well and add them to the group uh, i i i think i think we should invite them to the call first Okay. And then we'll see. We'll see from so that maybe call, ask like, for their emails. Yeah, exactly. I'll ask, I'll ask for their email. Um, extend the invitation for the call, and uh, we'll take it from there, depending if they want to join or or not. We should yeah. just be just be clear that they're welcome to join the call. Donation is not a precursor or requirement right. for the call. Right. But donations are very welcomed and, and will help a lot, <laughs> but we don't want anybody to feel like they have to pay to play. Right? It's an open forum. Right. Uh, I agree. So then maybe, so on the call, I mean, because it won't be resolved until then. So on the call, um, yeah, I, I think it's good. Anything else on that? Mm, yeah. So we'll just, uh, I'll just put it on next week, just to ensure, and then we can probably close it off. Um, any other items? If not, I believe that we're uh, done the, um, the items that I can, Anyways, you can move those uh, top two media releases to done. Okay. Um, why isn't it? Uh, so this one that, uh, why isn't it? Um, and it's viral. 
<laughs> like it's lagging. I don't know if it's because I'm sharing there my screen, go. but it's not liking it. And this one as well? Uh, yep. Yeah, and that was part of it. That okay. went on today. I mean, then if anyone has any, as we go through, I mean, not expecting to add anything more to this list this week based on what I've heard so far, but if there's anything that comes up, just that's a good spot to drop it. Otherwise, I'll I'll add it there later. All right. Uh, and with that, then I guess I'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much for being nice to me as the chair. Good job. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everybody. Bye. Cheers. See you next week.